Hey, Rodney. Roger Wallace, KXAN. Hey, hey, Roger. How you doing, buddy? I I'm good, man. Uh, I I'm curious, Rodney's leaving Texas and coming back. First of all, what what inspired you to come back? And second, what do you know now that maybe you didn't know then when you left uh, Rick's staff to be a head coach? Oh, man. Wow. Uh, no, that's a great question. I, you know, I, I tell you what, you know, the one thing that that really attracted me to coming back was was having an opportunity to come back and work for Chris Beard, you know, and uh, man, he and I have had a, a long standing relationship for many, many years. Uh, we've had our teams compete against one another. And, you know, he uh, he's the kind of guy that's going to come back here, man, and win a national championship here. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, what he was able to build out at Texas Tech. Uh, and the time that he was there was incredible, you know, and stuff. So, you know, the right guy, you know, the right time. And, uh, you know, obviously getting a chance to come back to University of Texas with the brand uh, that the University of Texas has, you know, was also, you know, very attractive uh, to myself again. You know, I, uh, I had a chance to be here with Rick and we had a chance to do a lot of great things while I was here with him. And we had a great run and a great journey, um, you know, I'm back here now to try to help us win a national championship. We don't shy away from that. And we're excited about trying to compete, you know, to get to Monday night. And I know Chris is the right guy to do that. Thanks. Nick Moyle, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Rodney. Yeah, Nick Moyle with the San Antonio Express News and Houston Chronicle. Nice to meet you. Um, you know, curious, obviously, you, you've been a head coach for the last decade now. Um, you know, was it just the, I guess, uniqueness of the situation that that made you want to I guess, leave the program that you had and come here to join Chris? Was it just, I guess, how rare of an opportunity this was? No, absolutely. I mean, those opportunities, these opportunities don't present themselves, uh, you know, in, in your career, you know, an opportunity to work with the guy that you have the utmost respect for in terms of what he's done to this point right now and where he's going to continue to go in, his fu in, uh, in the future. And, uh, um Man, when, when he was, you know, when he got named the coach here, man, I was like, man, what a what a home run hire. Um, you know, he's going to blow it out of the water here in, in terms of, you know, taking this program and, and uh, getting to the highest level and trying to get to Monday night. And, uh, you know, to have a chance to be a part of that, man, I want to be a part of that, you know. And like I said before, we made many good memories here before and stuff, man. But looking forward right now in terms of what we're trying to do more moving forward, it's the right time, it's the right guy, and it's the right opportunity, man, to be here and stuff. So, I didn't want to miss that, you know, and uh, and I love Austin, you know, and I love living here and, you know, had a chance to play here collegiately at St. Edwards and stuff as well. So, um, you know, this this place has a lot of fun memories for me here and I love this city. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, you know, were, were you surprised when you first heard that Chris was going to leave Tech for UT and, you know, what was his sort of, you know, selling pitch to you to get you to hop aboard? Well, again, uh, I think opportunity for both of us. We know, you know, these opportunities don't come along, you know, very often in your careers. And, and uh, um, you know, to have an opportunity to be the head coach at the University of Texas, I mean, that was something that probably has been, I can't speak for him, maybe a lifelong dream, you know, to, to be able to be the head coach here. And uh, we understand how powerful the brand is, uh, not only in our state, but also around the country uh, and everything as well. So to, to have an opportunity to, to, to coach at, you know, one of the elite programs in the country and have a chance to try to get to Monday night. He knows what that's like. He's already coached on Monday night. You know, we're trying to get this program to Monday night, and we're not going to shy away from those expectations. Dustin McComas, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Rodney, Dustin McComas, mornswoods.com. Uh, when you last left here, you know, Texas was kind of at that point where it was kind of knocking on that door to being a perennial program that could compete – for those Monday night opportunities. What do you think it's going to take to, to get Texas back to that point? And also, secondly, too, um, how much has recruiting changed over the last recent years? And how much has that, that Texas logo help you go out and recruit guys? No, oh, absolutely. I, you know, again, you know, we, we were able to do some, some really good things here. I mean, obviously had a lot of success uh, in my tenure here, the nine years I was here with Rick. And, uh, um, you know, to your point, we felt like we had a couple of teams that, that could have won a national championship during that, during that time as well. Um, you know, you look at style of play and you look the way that, you know, the way that, you know, uh, Coach Beer had a chance to build his program out there at Texas Tech. I mean, you know, his teams every night are going to hang their hat on defense. You're going to win a national championship. You hear the old cliche all the time about that, you know, defense wins championship. You have to be a, have, an, a, have an identity where you're going to guard every night. You don't know how well you're going to shoot the ball every night. You know, but but you know you can hang your hat every night on 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 uh, on playing hard nosed defense and defending at a very high level, and 
his teams have always done that. They've done it at a very high level, and he's also had some skilled players that have also carried his team offensively as well. You know, I look for us to be able to do that no differently here, a team that's going to compete every night really hard defensively uh, and, and going to also be able to, you know, score the ball as well from the offensive end as, as well being able to do that. Uh, you know, in terms of recruiting, uh, man, wow, recruiting's really changed over the last decade, you know, and, and uh, not just in our sport, but just in college athletics right now as a whole. Um, you know, you start talking about that portal, you know, and, you know, everybody's living in the portal right now daily, you know, and everything, but, but it's really been a game changer in, in, the, in, in college athletics, you know, and now you're talking about roster management from year to year. It used to be where we could bring in a guy, you know, and we could project that he was going to probably be in school maybe three years, maybe two years sometimes, maybe even one year at a time. But we knew he was going to be here uh, with, with no intentions of possibly going anywhere else in terms of his development. Uh, that's not the case anymore, you know, and stuff. So, you know, every year you have to, to have to really, you know, work your, your roster management in terms of, you know, developing guys, you know, and, and for that matter, targeting the kind of guys that you want to target to fit your style and play and, and your program. So uh, the dynamics have really changed a great deal. You know, we're still going to be, you know, I think a program that's going to build, you know, obviously with high school kids uh, as well. I mean, we're going to focus really hard on, our, on, on the younger kids in 22s and 23s moving forward. Um, you will know, we'll get to 24s at some point as, as well, but, but, you know, I always, I always thought we did a great job when I was here previously, really trying to keep the best players in the state of Texas, having an opportunity to play at the, at the university of Texas. And it's no different than what we're going to try to do here. I think you always work your way in, work your way out. We know we have a national brand. We know we can carry this logo anywhere around the country, out of the country and attract, you know, great student athletes here. Uh, to this university as well. So, um, you know, Rick Barnes always had a, had a saying when he was here, he'd say, uh, you know what, that was a Texas get, you know what I mean, in terms of the brand, you know. So, but uh, but no, we'll have some Texas gets where kids, you know, want to come to Texas and be a part of what we're doing. And uh, we don't underestimate how strong our brand is, though. Brian Davis, you're up, please. Hey, Rodney, Brian Davis with the Austin American Statesman. How are you doing today? Doing great, Brian. Thank you. Awesome. You know, kind of. I actually wanted to kind of build on that recruiting theory. Um, what? How would you describe to portal kids um, what exactly y'all are looking for in terms of? It seems like y'all are making targeted approaches on guys. Um, how, how are you selling the? How are you selling it to to guys who have already been and played D one basketball? Well, I guess for us, I mean, we got here a couple of weeks ago. We only had one guy on the roster that was committed to coming back. So we, we've had to try to really rebuild a, a, a team and, and a roster uh, in, in a short amount of time. You know, Coach has done a phenomenal job uh, in terms of recruiting and, and really selling youngsters on, on opportunities. When a guy leaves a place, sometimes he's maybe not happy with, with the situation or, or the opportunities he was given where he was. And he wants, he wants a different situation, a different opportunity in terms of whether that be, you know, a guy that wants to drive the ball now, he wants to be able to shoot the ball more, he wants to be able to do different things and, and maybe develop at a different rate or maybe play in a different, you know, style of play, you know, and things for that matter. But what we really tried to do is we've tried to hone in on building a team and and, and putting together a, a roster that uh, it, one that's going to, you know, be able to have a chance to, to gel together, you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, there's a stat that, that Coach Beard uses quite a bit as well. You know, we've had every team that wins the Big 12, there hasn't been a team that hasn't had at least three pros on, you know, on that on those teams. So, you know, you, you obviously have to have a, a very high level player to, to compete and win a championship in this league. Uh, we, we know that, but you also need guys that are going to be program guys, guys that are going to you know, identify and relate to the roles that we need them to carry out for us to be successful as well. So, you know, the game of basketball is the ultimate team sport. It's a team, you know, so it's not one individual that's going to win a championship for you. So we need everybody buying into their roles and wanting to do those at a very high level and being a star in their role uh, for that matter. But uh, I think, you know, what we try to do in the portal right now is try to put together a team. And uh, we're real close to, to, to having our team put together here and hopefully over the next, you know, couple of weeks, we'll, we'll have that, you know, solidified. 
Bob Ballou, go ahead, please, sir. Hey, Rodney. Bob Ballou, CBS Austin. Welcome back. Um, what did you learn as a head coach that is invaluable, invaluable to you now? Well, you know what? Those six inches, man, they, they make you lose a lot of hair. You know what I mean? For one, you know, uh, you, you don't get as much sleep. <laughs> You, you know, you're you're uh, you're the CEO. I mean, you're the guy in charge of the whole deal, you know, stuff. So, but you know, I was prepared. You know, I I, I had a chance to work under some really good guys and Harry Miller, you know, Jerry Wainwright, you know, Rick Barnes, you know. Um, so you know, having a chance to work with those guys really prepared me to be a head coach. And uh, you know, the thing that I always say about being a head coach, man, you know, we can deal with those fastballs every day. I was play a lot of baseball and things and you know you get in that old batting cage man that ball is coming right down the pipe i'm just nailing that ball all the time but those curve balls those sliders you know you've got to be able to deal with those every day that those are the ones you got to be able to deal with on a on a regular basis and you got to be able to make some some uh some, some tough decisions sometimes you know as a head coach uh and things of that nature there but uh um man i, I had a valuable experience doing it for 10 years uh i said to chris i wouldn't just leave for anyone in terms of coming and being an assistant again, but for, for him, and I have the utmost respect, you know, I, I love the way he's done things uh, at Texas Tech and built programs, you know, built this program there. Little Rock did a phenomenal job at Little Rock, you know, and we both were in this NCAA tournament at the same time. His locker room was right next to mine, and we, we both chuckled about how far we had come uh, in terms of being head coaches at that time and things. But, you know, again, you know, he's the right guy that's going to help us take this thing to a whole nother level. And then is there any kind of similar feel? I know you arrived a few years into Rick Barnes' tenure, but is there any kind of similar feel when you got here in 2002 to the feeling you have now under Chris Beard? No, I, I, th I think there's, there's some similarities there. I mean, we, we wanted to really try to establish ourselves uh, in the state in terms of recruiting and trying to keep the best players in the state. And we really made a conscious effort to do that, especially when I, when I came aboard. Uh, and, uh, and we felt like we did that. We felt like we kept some of the top guys. We're not going to get all the guys. The big state is almost like a whole other country. So we're not going to get every guy, but, but we felt like we got the right guys and we got the guys that really took our program to another level. And, you know, we've got some other great assistants on, on staff, uh, you know, that, that'll do a great job recruiting likewise. But, but, but we really did a, a really good job of, uh, you know, really trying to, you know, corral this state and get the best players to stay here and stuff. And we'll try to do that at the highest level as well here. And, uh, you know, again, we won't shy away from those expectations of trying to, uh, to win a national championship. Sam in Dallas, go ahead, please. Hey, Ronnie, it's uh, Sam Blum from the Dallas Morning News. You know, I'm curious just because, uh, you know, you guys got to, obviously you were a head coach. Chris Ogden was a head coach. You got an assistant from, from Kansas. Do, do you feel like th this program really – maybe took a step up in terms of its financial commitment to this, to, to kind of building this uh, coaching staff? Well, again, you know, this is a special place, you know, and, uh, um, you know, we had a long time athletic director that I had tremendous respect for in the last days. I mean, he was, he was the best, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, um, you know, we have CDC now who has that same type of vision, that same type of swagger about himself as well. So, you know, when you have that kind of leadership in place, Man, the sky's the limit on how far you're going to be able to go as an athletic program. Uh, you know, so, I, I, again, you, you have that here right now at this time. And we feel that throughout, you know, when I was here before, I mean, every program you felt like had a chance to win a national championship, you know. And, and a lot of that credit had to go to the loss and, and obviously the, uh, the, the, not only the opportunities to, to attract great coaches, but also to be able to attract great assistants to come in and, and help those great coaches build those programs. And, uh, you know, no different than what CDC has been able to do right now in terms of following that same format. You know, he's giving you everything and all the resources you need to go out and get done what you want to get done at the highest level. And uh, without question, he's been able to, to, to afford us that opportunity and uh, we're excited about it. Thank you. Jake Garcia, go ahead, please. Hey, Rodney, Jake Garcia with KVU. Um, in your time coaching in the state of Texas, have you noticed that your background as a high school player here, a college player here, has helped uh, just in terms of, um, you know, your relationships with those high school coaches? Oh, great question, Jake. Uh, I think anytime you're homegrown, I think you always have an opportunity to, 
to uh, nurture the relationships you've had, you know, as as a uh, as, as a youngster playing as a high school coach in the state, uh, as a guy as a as a guy who's coached in the state at the collegiate level already. I think you get a chance to to nurture those relationships and uh, you know recruiting and what we do in this business is all people based, you know, and it's all relationship based. You know, people have to trust what you're doing and what you're what you're selling in terms of you know, um, the vision you have and, and what you're trying to get done. And without question, I think when you're, when you're homegrown, people, you know, tend to, to obviously uh, to, to lend you that opportunity and that trust, you know, to be able to do that and stuff. So uh, it definitely helps, you know, to say that, hey, you're a product of this state, you're a product of Texas basketball in this state and how far it's grown, you know, and uh, it definitely helps. we got time for one last one for Rodney. Chip Brown, go ahead, please, sir. Rodney Terry, Chip Brown, Horns 24-7. What's going on, man? Hey, Chip. How you doing, buddy? Good. What uh, What's Texas getting in, in Timmy Allen, Dylan DeZue, and Christian Bishop? Well, man, great question. I, that, you know, we're getting, we're getting proven guys, you know, guys that have already put it in the books. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, obviously, you know, they're, they're going to have to adapt and adjust to, to our style of playing the way we – we do things, but those guys have already done it at a very high level, you know, and, and they're very good young players that are, that have had really good young, you know, careers to this point right now. Um, you know, Timmy Allen's a guy that can do a little bit of everything. You know, he's a guy that's kind of a, a point forward. He can handle the basketball. He can pass the ball. He can, you know, play without the ball in terms of trying to make things happen, you know, and, and uh, he's a proven guy, you know, over the years in the Pac-12. You know, you talk about Dylan DeSue. He, DeSue was, you know, one of the better players in the SEC. I mean, t- one of the top rebounders, one of the top scorers, you know, and he has great length. And, uh, man, he's one of those guys that's going to be able to get a lot of things done for us at a very high level, man. We're extremely excited about it, you know. And then you talk about CB, you know, and, you know, CB, boy, he's, you know, Bishop's one of those guys who's athletic. You know, he's going to be able to rebound. He's going to be able to drive. He's just a versatile player, you know, and, all three of those guys have a lot of versatility about themselves and, and they're, they're already proven guys. They've done it at a high level already. And uh, man, hopefully we can continue to enhance their, their game and, uh, and also enhance our program at the same time. So we're excited about those youngsters coming in and, and continue to develop and, and help, you know, take our program to another level.